So we're at an antique mall. I don't know how well you can see it. I'm in the old beater van today. Um, rainy day, not so nice. We're going to go look and see what we can find. I have not been in here in a while, so I figured it would be worth checking out. There's a lot of vendors in here that do move in a lot of new stuff as well. Some that I personally know, so I've been told, hey, you should check out and see what I got in my booth. So we're going to look at just a few special booths and go from there. Now here's the first booth I went to. I think I went to like six. Now they've got music playing in here, so I couldn't play it, but you can just see some of the items here. Big bag of sheet music, five bucks. Some ribbons here that looked pretty good. Some paper items that were fairly cheap. Again, I know which booths usually to go to and which ones I always make money from. I gotta look through here carefully. Just gotta make sure that it's vintage originals. Here's a good piece right here, the games booklet. Had some comic books, some catalogs, uh, Fortune Magazine. Now, they wanted a little bit too much for many of the items, but if you're careful, you can pick out the good, the diamonds in the rough here. I'm not looking for big stuff. I'm almost always looking for small and paper items like this because that's where I make most of the money at. Now, most of the time, I don't look in the case, but you never know. Sometimes, like here, there's a whole bunch of matches in here. It could have been the right ones. The price wasn't terrible if they were better matches. Not worth my time, but still, you never know. Now, this here was well worth my time. I spent some time looking through here. Boxes and boxes and boxes of separated dollar postcards. Now, I was lucky enough, I did spend some time looking through them. I did buy a bunch of real photo, real picture postcards, railroad, and other ones that should get me some really good money, all for a dollar. I only bought cards that cost a dollar or less. Now, I always talk about marks, and here are some marks figures there. There's a painted German marks. There's some larger ones here, World War II style, 1960s, all very nicely marked marks, M-A-R-X. A uh, bag of postcards, lots of different stuff in this booth. Sometimes these sorts of booths can get me the most money. The ones with all sorts of stuff jammed in here. Now they also had some nice uniforms. Uh, prices were just too high for me to make anything, but lots of nice items just to look at the stuff I enjoy. So even if I don't buy as much uh, from stuff like this or the booths like this, I still enjoy coming into places. Here's a nice one, uh, World War One as well, right there in the front. Lots of early uniform pieces and parts. Uh, lobby card here from a movie. Not in the best condition. It's seen better days. Believe it or not, those do not sell for a ton of money. Now, they also have some early newspapers. Not really early enough to interest me. 1870s or so, I think, was one of them. Nothing going back into, like, key primetime Civil War or something. I think this other one was 1848. Either way, there wasn't enough contact, nothing going on really important to draw somebody uh, into those newspapers. I sell vintage newspapers a lot, but they have to have some content. Now, they also had some early bayonets. There's a daguerreotype in the case. Uh, quite a bit of interesting stuff in here, some helmets and the whole works. But again, the prices were way too high on most of the stuff, at least to make some money. Price-wise, to a collector, it wasn't terrible. Um, bag of patches. Mostly, though, it's fairly common stuff. Really not worth my time to invest into it. Now, this booth had a lot of publicity material from TV shows, uh, films, and things like that. And they weren't actually priced very bad at all. There's quite a few in here that looks like I could really rake out and make some pretty good money. Uh, some of these ABC folders here for, like, the Fall Guy... Um, TJ Hooker and things. I've never seen things like that. Just a single photo can go for 10 or 15 bucks in some of these. And to have the entire press book, press material from ABC advertising the show before it actually was released is killer in my book. I spent some time in this booth. This booth will probably make me 300, 400 bucks range uh, when everything is said and done. I spent some money though here. Well worth it. Some interesting, some unique items. I love the promotional items from TV and movies for sure. Now this item here I'm holding in my hand is probably the biggest disappointment to see in this place. This is a very well detailed Reedy Improvement District electric company. You can see Reedy, that's the character there on the right with his feet. You can't see his whole body. But that was a cut down, hand painted, original sign, probably from the 30s. Shamefully, it's not all there, but 
couple of toys, nothing really fancy here. This is hit and miss with places like this, these, these big, huge antique malls. You'll run into where there's some good dealers and some bad dealers. The majority of the dealers, though, are just going to have it like a collector price. Nothing can be resold. So you have to be able to pick out the stuff that's going to carry the value, the, the better stuff. Now, there's some pretty decent stuff in here. Again, it's mostly high-priced, higher uh, than I can actually afford to pay for it. Uh, down here in this box, I noticed some lobby cards, and the first person I see is James Cagney on the front. Now, unfortunately, it's not one of his mobster movies, Angels with Dirty Faces or something. Most of these lobby cards are stuff you'll run into. They were made in mass quantity for a thousand uh, basic movie theaters across the country, and then they made thousands of them for you know all the other movies that came out so they're not very highly collected they've got them priced eight to ten for a collector that wouldn't be too bad for but to resell there's just no money to be had in them at the price they have them they're in excellent condition uh, but you can find an entire set of these probably for around 40 or 50 bucks for any one of these movies that they're talking about now these are all original 50s and 60s but no value now here is some of the advertising items I got from ABC now this is ABC television this is an uh, ad promotional kit for Three's a Crowd. This was released after Three's a Company. It was like a reboot. I don't think it lasted more than a season or two. It has real photos in it with the bios and the callouts here. This would have been given to like a newspaper or magazine or something, and they would have used the documents, the photo itself, and then they would have used the, the description actually to publish. These would have ran in local newspapers and things like that. There's info on the show itself in here. I almost never run into these. The last couple of these I have for pretty much anything sold for like 60 or 70 bucks a piece. I paid five to 10 bucks each for them. Some were much better than other ones here. This is from TJ Hooker, and I do remember the show. It has William Shatner in it, and I think this will be a, a good plus because I can add Star Trek and the whole works into it. I remember seeing the show. I think my father watched it, if I'm not mistaken, back in the day. Um, this should do extremely well because it has publicity and advertising stuff, bio sheets and print ad material for it, showrunner information as well, too. So I'm guessing any one of these should at least bring me 75 bucks or better. Uh, again, I've got, what would that be? Uh, two of these were five. I think these are both eight-ish. Got one more there, so what I got, 20, 36 bucks or so. One of these should pay for all of them. Now, I also got the Fall Guy. I used to watch Six Million Dollar Man, so it's got Lee Majors in it. This should do incredibly well. I just couldn't believe they had these. Um, I do extremely well with any of these photo-related items. You've seen me sell them. I've got hundreds and hundreds of photos up right now. Again, these are advertising, print ads. Um, for the newspaper, half tones they would make out of them. It's got some more info on the other side too, but uh, for the price, five bucks, I should easily, easily, easily get at least 40 or 50 bucks for this one, especially in the original folder. Now, Hug a Bunch was a toy line, they had a TV show. Um, these do extremely well for stuff like this. You don't run into kids' show related items very often. Uh, you can see there were like puppets. I'll have to see who actually made this the show. Maybe it's someone well known or something. But these should do extremely well. It has all the little taglines with it, information. Um, you can see the doll itself with some TV title info here. Here's the storyline. This is an introduction. So this is before it came out. Intro vision, the hug a bunch movie surprise. The Hug a Bunch lends a helping hand. So there's a couple different ones they're advertising. The Puppet Magic of Tony Urbano. So that's probably who did the puppets. Uh, Jenny James stars in the Hug a Bunch. So it's got some information. These would be like updates for like newspapers and things like that. Now this is the best one here. Uh, I do believe I did pay 10 for this. But the reason I paid 10 for this is it's got three sheets of... Uh, professional studio quality slides that you could do uh, use to promote this. Rodney Dangerfield's in here, so that one right off the bat got me uh, interested. Um, let's see here. Here's Lionel Richie. That one should do extremely well there. There's the Cabbage Patch Special. So these are official ABC Studio slides meant to advertise again. Uh, and on top of that, there are some for some actual movies. You've got Star Trek II, 
uh, reds, uh, the gauntlet, that's Grease too. it says on the other side, um, Honky Tonk Man, Clint Eastwood, Neighbors, uh, John Belushi, Diner, I'm not sure on that one, I don't remember that one at all, Buddy Buddy, and then The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, and then even some more, Kentucky Derby Series, Single Bar, Single Women, The Great Pretender, a heart sounds wet gold billy grier now i'm not sure on any of those but i'm sure just a couple of these slides should easily get me say 30 bucks or so the star trek one i'm almost sure i've had before from another lot like this now it goes and adds some information on here there's some information about the theatrical films fourth quarter movie special so this is stuff that they send out ahead of time before the actual uh, shows are ready to air on TV. Now, let me show you just a few other things I got as well. Now, I nabbed this up too. Now, this is an original. It's on the right stock. This is like a, a sign you would have in a shop, a grocery store, a five and dime or something like that. It is custom printed. Um, so it's not like a modern day reproduction or anything else like that. This would probably date to the 1890s to about 1920-ish. Um, I think I got 10 bucks into it uh, after discount. I have my tax ID registered there, so I don't pay tax on anything. Um, I'm going to probably put 75 or better on this one regardless. I did try and look this up, but I couldn't find any for the same name. Um, it could be some local brand. I'll track this one down, though, for sure, if it's anything that's uh, reasonably no uh, known. Now, I talk about World's Fairs and Expositions all the time. This is the California Exposition uh, through the Panama Canal. This is a trip. This is an advertising flyer for this. So it's a really nice, interesting item here, without a doubt. This is advertising uh, this person's trip, I would, I would take it. So it's travel. It's tied to California. It's tied to an expo. Um, it talks about some films and some other things at the exposition. Uh, so really, this is a really nice item. I haven't seen something like this for it's going to be worth at least 30 bucks, would be my guess. Now, these two go together. Unfortunately, I'll have to flatten those out in a paper press or something here. Now, this is the Awani Hotel in uh, Yosemite National Park. This is a lunch menu, 1930s, you can see. Nice, decent, early, original one. And I have a book from the exact same place. Advertising the amenities, showing you the rooms themselves. Um, 30s-ish. This one could have been printed in the 20s and just been used that long. This book here will do extremely well. I have not seen anything from this hotel or this establishment before, in all honesty. So I'm going to at least get $57.50, I would think, out of the pair. Probably more than that. Probably 30 or so a piece is what I'm going to try and hold out for. Here's another one. Olympic Hotel, Seattle. Seattle's Grand Hotel. It's got an interesting Art Deco 30s, 40s uh, look to it. Yeah, I would say so for sure. It's an early one. Excellent condition. No issue. Something like this, I'll probably put up $34.50, get at least $20 bucks for it. Here's another one. Columbian Souvenir Visitors Directory. Now, the Columbian is the Columbian World's Fair, 1893, Chicago. This gives it away. The biggest and most important thing about this is this is a giveaway from Marshall Field and Company, a major, major department store. That alone is why this will be worth something. Everything I find from Marshall Fields does extremely well. There is a picture of the department store itself. Uh, really nice item here, in all honesty. This was $3. Now, the spine cover of the spine is a little loose. I will fix that up. Uh, if you've watched my channel, you know exactly what I'll do. Um, and this is a really nice item. You can see Christopher Columbus there. It talks about it and shows the the actual buildings. Now, the normal books on the souvenir books from the Columbian World's Fair aren't worth a fortune. Uh, but this being an advertising piece, man, I'm probably going to put... 75 i'll probably end up selling it in the 40 to 45 range maybe bottom end 35 maybe just because of the condition but it's a nice one only again because marshall field and company i've had buttons from the same same company letterheads trade cards a ton of stuff marshall field and company they've been around since like 1870s maybe even before that now this is the receipt they've got the breakdown on what i paid on everything you can see nothing is super expensive on this whole thing here um, yeah, I think the 
the sign, the flavor sign was $15.95. There you go. $100.20 for everything. They did bulk up some of the, the postcards. So you'll see 10 PCs at a uh, dollar each. So the postcards were all a dollar or a dollar twenty-five. I think everyone in there. So uh, postcard wise, there's probably hundreds of dollars uh, profit from those as well. So keep your eye out. If you know what you're doing, you can make money from a antique mall very, very easily. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Nike, for those who are always on their game.